Why is there a debt to pay? How could there be a debt that mankind, humankind, has towards God? Well, that's very simple. The debt that we had to pay is because we have broken the law of God. God's law was broken. You know, when you break a law, even in this land, in any land, you have to pay a price. There's a price to be paid. If you're driving down the street and you, you, you're driving beyond the speed limit and you get pulled over and you get a ticket, that's the price you pay for going beyond the limits of the law. If you steal or you do something that is wrong, contrary to the laws that's been established, you have a price to pay. And so what happened then that caused men or mankind to be indebted to God? is because we broke the law of God. And that law was only one law. There was one law that God gave mankind. When he created the first man called Adam, there was one law that he gave him. And that law was that you can eat of all the trees that's in the garden, but there's one tree that you should not eat of, and that's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God said to him, the day that you eat, the day that you eat, you will surely die. For the wages of sin is death. Hmm. So Adam sinned. And that's exactly what happened because God gave the command, one law. The day that you eat of this fruit, you shall die. The word death, when, G, when, when, the, when God says the day that you eat, you shall die, he's talking about separation from God. Because if we are separated from God, we're living a life of death. In other words, dead men walk in. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're not connected to God, we're dead men walking. He says, the day you eat, you shall die. Adam died that day. But yet, physically, he continued to live for 960 years. What does it mean? It means that not only did he, was he separated from God spiritually, now he begins to die physically. And it took 960 years for him to die. Which God never intended when he created man to die physically. Man was created to live forever with God. In that same relationship that he started off with, when he walked with God, talked with God, the Bible tells us in the cool of the day, God will visit that man. They'll walk together, talk together, fellowship together, because that man was considered a son of God. And when he died, spiritually, he now was separated from God, to the point God says, now you have to leave this place. He placed him in the garden. He said, now you got to leave this garden because now you're no longer one with me. Now I want you to think about that for a moment. He died that day. If he didn't, then God didn't, he lied about it. It didn't work like he said it was because he said the day that you eat, you'll die. Now I'm, I'm, I'm spending time with this because this is so important to understand what happened to humanity and why this day called Resurrection Day is the most important event that happened in the history of humanity. Because it says in that verse, the gift of God is eternal life, is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Hmm. But here, here's the answer to the problem. First, we talk about the problem, then we talk about the answer to the problem. Because the truth is, when Adam died spiritually, everyone to be born, every man, woman, boy, and girl to be born out of the loins of Adam, day two died spiritually. In other words, we were all born in this world in sin. And in that sin, we were automatically separated from God. Because of one man's sin, 
we all pay the penalty for that sin. Because everyone that was born after Adam's sin was born in the image of that fallen man called Adam. Because there's a law, there's another law in Genesis that says everything is produced after its own kind. So when God made man, he made man. He said, let us make man in our image. And he made man after his kind to live forever, to live eternally. But when he fell and he sinned and he's now separated from God, everything, everyone that was born through Adam is now separated from God automatically. Everyone that was born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we thank God for Jesus because in Jesus there's life, eternal life. The penalty, the penalty for sin is death. And there's a spiritual death that took place that lead to a physical death. And so every one of us, the day that you're born, you begin to die. Because the Bible said, now it's appointed unto man, every man wants to die. And it was never God's intention for mankind to die. Because we were created after his kind. Amen. Just because we were created after his kind, he never intended for us to die. But that one law caused the entire earth to be cursed and all of humanity to be cursed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look here once again. This, look in, in the sixth chapter of Romans. We're still there. Let's go back to verse, uh, verse 9. Let me give you another example. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9, here's what verse 9 says. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now this is an important verse. I said this is important. That nine verse once again, knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more. Jesus. Now, I want you to listen for a moment because the importance of this is that since all have died with Adam, the way to live again is going only be through Christ Jesus. Because that's the gift that God gives. The gift is through Christ Jesus. And it's called the gift of life. Amen. Now, notice, notice again it says that Christ have been raised from the dead. It's the only person that ever, ever been raised from the dead. Now, keep in mind that, in fact, I want you to hold your place. Just, just go with me to hold your place right here in Romans 6. And let's go over to the fifth chapter. Just go back to the fifth chapter. Let me show you something. Chapter 5. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? All right, now look, watch, watch this, chapter 5, watch, watch, watch what happens. In, in verse 17, it says, if by, For if by the one man's offense, that's trespass, death reigned through one, speaking of Adam, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, therefore, as, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. We didn't have a choice. Resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Now look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, for as by one man's disobedience, that's Adam. Many were made sinners. We had no choice. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. 
Now, this verse is so important because it's saying to us, because of what Adam did, we all came under the category of sinners. Because of that one sin. But because of what Jesus did, we all can come under that place called righteous. Because he, <laughs> he left his place and came and took our place so that we can become like him. Now think about that for a moment. This is so important to understand that that, that one sin caused all mankind to live in a place called sin. And not just the acts of sin or the deeds of sin, but the nature of sin. The nature of sin is what separates us from God. Oh, are you listening to what I'm saying to you? See, you, you get separated from God not because of the deeds of sin or the acts of, or sinful acts. We're separated from God because of the, the nature. It's called, that, it's called the sin nature. Because now we're born under the, uh, uh, through the loins of Adam as, as it said, because of one man's sin, we all became sinners. Now, I need, I spend some time here because I need everyone to understand that you didn't choose to be a sinner. You were born that way. We didn't choose that. Come on. Everything is created after its own kind. You weren't born. We, we were born that way. We didn't choose it. This has to be understood so, we, so you can understand what happened when Jesus came. You can understand what this day represents to everybody who are believers in Christ. You can understand exactly what Resurrection Day is all about. And so I'm spending time on this point because there's a need to understand. There's a glorious, glorious presence of God when you make a decision to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Something happens to you and for you that no one else or no experience that you can have in this life is equal to what happens to you when you make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. Because he says life comes through Christ. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What gift is he talking about? The gift is Jesus. The gift is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ah, for God so loved the world that he gave his own. That, gave, that giving is a gift. Nothing that we paid for or worked for. That's God's love and God's grace towards humanity. Hallelujah. Because, uh, I like this verse because this, this says it all, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Speaking of Jesus, one man obedience. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus is the only person to be raised from the dead. You make a statement like that, and many says, well, I read in the Bible several people were raised from the dead, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Because those, that, when we go back to Scripture, we found that Elijah raised a young man from the dead. Elisha raised someone from the dead. Peter raised someone from the dead. Amen. Uh, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And you go in the scriptures, you find from the Old Testament, New Testament, people were raised from the dead. But there's a difference with, being, with Jesus being raised from the dead. The reason it's called resurrection from the dead. Not just being raised, but it says that death has no more dominion over him. That he cannot die again. Everyone that has been raised died again. Lazarus being raised from the dead, he died again. But being resurrected from the dead is conquering death. Yes. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
Because look at that ninth verse in sixth chapter once again. That ninth verse, here's what it said. Knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, he dies no more. Amen. He doesn't die in, again. He, can't, he did it once. Everybody say once. He said he dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Lazarus died again. That young man in Nain, called in the city of Nain, that woman who had a son, the only son that Jesus raised from the dead, he died again. So did that young boy that Lazarus raised from the dead, he died again. They all died again. But it says Jesus dies no more. Why? Because he conquered that enemy called death. God never created death. He, all, he created life. And death is not of God. God never intended for death to reign in human life or people to die. Amen. I said amen. So him being resurrected from the dead conquered the spirit of death that he dies no more. Mm. Jesus being the only person. This is, a, this is a moment, a time of celebration. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ because what he did was paid the debt that mankind owed towards God. Amen. God is the lawgiver. Amen. I said God's the lawgiver. And he's the creator. And when he created man, he gave him one law. And when that law was broken, death came. When the law was broken, death came. We, we, we didn't make it up. God said it. The day you eat, you'll die. Amen. The day that you eat, you'll surely die. Death has no longer have dominion over him. Speaking of Jesus. The next verse, verse 10. Romans and sixth chapter. For the death that he died, he died to sin. What sin? What sin? The nature of sin, the sin nature. He died to sin. Watch this. Once, everybody say once. He died to sin once for all. That's all of mankind. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. He died to sin once for all. In other words, the debt was paid when he died. And the victory is in the resurrection. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? He didn't stay in the grave. He was raised from the dead. The grave couldn't hold him, and death couldn't keep him. Right. Hallelujah. Because the gift of God is eternal life. Thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. Because of one man obedience, many was made righteous. We were made sinners, and through Christ Jesus, we were made righteous. And there's nothing we did to earn any of it. <laughs> we didn't sin. We were born in it. We didn't do acts of righteousness to become righteous. It was a gift from God. Jesus brought that gift. Jesus, being the gift to humanity, brought the gift of life. I come that you'll have life and have it more abundantly. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Say it again. Say, thank you, Jesus. The gift of righteousness. Glory be to God forever. Hallelujah. Because of one man. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Because God couldn't find a man or someone to pay this debt. 
and he decided that he'll pay it himself. Oh, come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. I said he decided to pay it himself so that he'll, he'll, he'll come down and be a man, a person, a human, sinless, without sin, to pay the price for sinners, all of mankind. Glory be to God forever. Glory be to God forever. And him being raised from the dead is God's proof that this price was paid. If he wasn't raised from the dead, how would we know that the price was paid? Where is the victory? The victory is in the resurrection. Shout amen, somebody. I said the victory is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Turn over to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is chapter 2. Am I helping you this morning? Are we learning something? Now watch this. Now, these are, these are, these are simple message, but profound. It's a reality. Hebrew in chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, praise God, praise God. Now watch what God, watch what God did. Now watch there in, in uh, beginning in the ninth verse. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. It says, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death. So in other words, he was made to die. Crowned with glory and honor that he, Jesus, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. He died once for all. In this verse, it said he tasted death for everyone. Hallelujah. I said he tasted it for everybody. Praise you. Does that mean we're not going to die? Does that mean we'll never die? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Because the Bible does say it's appointed unto man once to die. But that's just the first death. There's another death called the second death. That's eternal death. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? There's another death called in the book of Revelation. It's called the second death. That's eternal death. That's spiritual death for eternity. The law of God will not change once to die. We all will die. It's coming a day when we are pointed to death. But after that death, we do not experience the second death because Jesus come that you'll have life and have it more abundantly. He said, the Bible said, the gift of God is eternal life, not eternal death. Hallelujah. Jesus came to give us eternal life. So that second death has no reign over us. Hallelujah. We wait for that day when this mortality put on immortality, when this corruptible body will put on incorruptible. Oh, come on, come on. In other words, we'll be like the Jesus that was raised from the dead where he couldn't die no more. Amen. Jesus had a, a body that was called glorified. Death couldn't touch him. He died once for all, amen, and dies no more. So when he came to life, he now has a body that cannot be put to death anymore. And that's exactly what he promises you and I, that we will have that body one day. This body will die, but we won't die eternally. We'll put on a new body. And that's the same, it looks the same as the body that Jesus had after he was raised from the dead. Every one of us. The Bible calls, it said that Jesus is the first fruit from the dead. If he's the first, then there's a lot to follow. There's a lot of other fruits to follow. And that's you and I. We will be raised to eternal life. Christ came that we will have life and have it more abundantly.
the gift of God is eternal life. 